Hi there. I'm Jim from Edge Impulse. I'm a staff solutions engineer here. So I work day to day helping customers figure out where edge machine learning fits into their product systems and pipelines. And I wanted to jump on uh, this recording just to walk through a couple of examples of usage of the new GPT-40 labeling block that Jan showed off a couple of weeks ago. So this is a really cool feature which allows us to distill knowledge from one of these absolutely massive large language models down into a model that will run on a super resource constrained device, you know, even all the way down to a Cortex M4 MCU. So the way that this works is you basically build a prompt and use that prompt to then label a data set that's unlabeled. Um, and the example Jan used was to uh, walk around his child's bedroom, there are a bunch of toys on the floor, and take a video, and then feed that video into this pipeline, which then labels every frame to see if there's a toy in the frame or not. Um, really nice little use case. But uh, I was challenged with uh, the task of finding out, okay, what other kinds of use cases can we use this technology for in a more industrial setting? So something that I started looking into was a data set I found of satellite imagery. So if we just look at some of these images here, this is a, a classic image from a satellite and there are clouds in it. So satellites are a really good use case for edge machine learning because they're really resource constrained. You want to uh, have low latency so you can respond quickly, but also more importantly, the cost of transferring data from a satellite down to the ground is really expensive. So if you can do your uh, processing up in the clouds rather than in the cloud, then um, uh, you can make some real savings there. So there are a couple of ideas I had. First one was, can we classify what type of cloud? So this goes a step further than Jan's simple presence detection. I mean, we can very easily create a model that detect whether or not there were clouds but can we classify the type of cloud? Um, so I built a little prompt here in GPT-40, re respond only with the cloud type and no cloud, or unsure if you're unsure. And this worked okay, but then when I ran it through, uh, we got a bunch of different uh, cloud type responses. This is one of the kind of dangers of, uh, of LLMs. You're not necessarily sure what the output's going to be, even if you build your prompt very well. So what I did was I went and found from the Met Office uh, a list of different cloud types, and I built a little string list. And then my next prompt uh, was to respond only with a set number of uh, responses of cloud types, um, which hopefully will then give us a little bit more of a robust labeling method. So what we do is once we've built a prompt that we're happy with, we can copy this prompt and then head over to our um, project. And if we go to data sources in our project, this project has a bunch of unlabeled cloud images. Click add a new data source, transformation block, and uh, let's head to label image data using GPT-40. You'll have already passed in your open API, a open AI API key into uh, your organization to do this. And you simply just copy your prompt in Disable labels with unsure. I'm going to set a maximum number of labels to do as a thousand and set a hundred concurrency so this happens quickly. And then we'll just click next to set up the actions and create the pipeline. Oh, hang on, done something wrong there. Yeah, next to create the action, create the pipeline. And what this will do is we'll kick off a job which runs through all of that data and uh, labels the unlabeled samples using that prompt from GPT-40. The nice thing is that when we, and this will pop through in a second, but we can look at some existing labeled data, we get a reason for why each of these um, uh, images is labeled in the way it is. So if we look at this value, clouds are puffy and appear to have significant vertical extent characteristic of cumulus clouds. So there's some nice natural language reasoning with all of these labels, and this can be really useful for debugging. If you look at how a human labels images, they maybe would look at a large bunch of them and they have some subject matter expertise, and they'd apply that subject matter expertise to the images. But if you have 4,000 images to label, uh, it's going to be a, humans get bored very quickly, whereas a, a large language model doesn't get bored. It may make mistakes, which is why it's really important to validate your data set. 
but uh, it does at least give you some reasoning when it does make mistakes. So if we just look at an example of some of the mistakes it makes, if I look here, we have three different spellings of cumulus. Now in my prompt, I asked for just this spelling. So we're, we're getting a little bit of error there, but actually it's very easy in Edge Impulse to just come in and relabel the uh, badly labeled cumulus samples um, as cumulus. So if we just click cumulus, then that's fine. That does the job there. So let's see if our labeling is complete. Yes, so we've managed to label these files and if you look at the logs, you can see we've labeled a bunch of different uh, uh, labels here. And the nice thing is that we not only got these cloud labels, but we also have a uh, some which are unsure. So if we look at our unsure labels, um, we can see that they're already disabled. and if we look at some of the reasoning, you can see that sometimes it's not totally sure, so it doesn't, doesn't put a label in where it's not sure. So now we have a labeled data set of uh, different clouds. And what we can do is, I'm just going to quickly uh, make sure that all of my unlabeled samples are disabled. And all of my labeled samples are enabled because I've been playing around with this a little bit. So we'll enable all of those and then disable all of my unsure samples. So now we have a nice data set that's, that's ready to go. We can go through and create our impulse. So I'm going to use a 96 by 96 image data input, image processing block, and a transfer learning uh, model. So on the left, we are treating this as our sensor, and the output that we want is what type of cloud we have. First, we'll just generate our features. And uh, this is just from a previous run. I'll come back once this is finished. OK, so we've generated our features. And you can see we have some nice clustering with no cloud up here, and then some other clustering for cumulus and uh, alto cumulus and cirrus and all of this. So we'll see how this performs when we train our model. Once we generated the features, this is what the model is then trained on. So we just head over to our training, and we're going to use a uh, mobile net v1, 96 by 96, 0.35 classifier. And I'm just going to let it run for a little bit longer and do a slightly smaller learning rate. Um, and given that some of our um, Classes have a bit less data. I'm going to auto weight some cl the classes so we mix in some more copies of underrepresented classes. And then let's start the training. I'll come back in a second once it's done. Okay, so our model's trained and we have okay accuracy. We're getting very good accuracy with no cloud. So our original problem, the no cloud cloud thing, is solved. Um, and then we're getting decent accuracy on a couple of these classes, but some of them are really struggling. So potentially the solution here would be to add more data uh, or rather label more of our data set. We only labeled a, a couple of thousand of the 5,000 images and see where we go from there. But what you can see here is this model will run on a Cortex M7 or a Cortex M4 chip with, with pretty decent performance. So the last thing to do probably is to just check out some model testing and see if we can uh, classify some of these uh, samples ourselves. So this is a potentially a cumulus cloud. Let's look at this one. And uh, uncertain on this one, which is fair. Again, uncertain. And if we look at some of these no cloud ones, these might be a little more confident. No cloud, yeah, so correctly uh, classified. So that's one approach to using this GPT-40 block. You kind of imbue some of the knowledge from that large language model. One thing to remember here is that it's, it's often uh, a little difficult to verify like the accuracy of these, the, the labeling that GPT-40 can do. So I would use this as a supplement or a way to start labeling and, and potentially 
try out an idea and see if you get some decent accuracy before you dive in completely. But then there is one other approach I wanted to explore, which I've done. Uh, here's one I made earlier style, which is cloud coverage. So if we just jump back into here, and look at this new prompt. Look at this image from a satellite and respond with a percentage of how much of the image is obscured by clouds. Respond only with a percentage, not including the sign, or unsure if the image is corrupted or not from a satellite. And then we get for this, we get about 50%. So this is another interesting approach that we can use for uh, this style of, uh, of, of labeling, which is you can label a binary classification. Is there cloud or no cloud? You can label the type of cloud. But you can also label uh, something for a regression algorithm, so uh, the percentage of cloud coverage. So what I've done is I've labeled this data uh, using this prompt. And um, if we look at the data set, we have a, a data set with a bunch of labels for all of these different percentage coverages. So you can see all of these different ones, 25, 30, 15, all the way down this data set. So if we then look at the uh, results of training this model, it's trained in much the same way. Uh, actually, the best thing to look at is probably this feature explorer, because it gives you a good idea of, of maybe uh, some of the correlation that we're seeing. So for a regression algorithm, this, this kind of color map goes from red, which is uh, zero, all the way up to purple, which is 100. And we're seeing that gradient in our data set in the Feature Explorer, which suggests that we might well be able to classify this data um, using a regression algorithm. So what I've designed here is a, a pipeline which takes in our image data, passes it through a regression model, and then gives us a scalar output from 0 to 100. Um, so if we look at the model testing for this trained model and uh, look at something fairly high as a label, so this is one we previously labeled as 100% coverage, and we're getting about 90% coverage of this uh, based on our distilled model. So that's pretty good. And then if we look at some, some of the lower ones, let's find one with zero. We should ideally see, yeah, so a, a, a coverage score of two for this image here, which is clearly um, to be expected. And then if we look at something sort of roughly in the middle, maybe this 60% coverage one, so this is labeled as 60, but I would say that actually that 44% looks to me a little bit more accurate. So this is an interesting point. So what we've done here is we've created two types of model from the same data set, just labeling them with very simple different prompts. And then we've managed to distill the knowledge from that GPT-40 model into this um, output, which is able to give us a label uh, based on any of these images uh, that are completely unseen. and I think this is sort of an interesting use case in itself for clouds, but it sparks a number of other ideas in different fields. So imagine you're working on a production line and you want to uh, take images of all of your production um, produced uh, parts and want to find ones with defects in. This could be a really good way to start your data set off and create a, a model pipeline and edge impulse that would then be able to run in the factory. Um, and this, again, as I say, is not a be-all and end-all, but it's a really good way of starting your prototyping and, and getting your data uh, labeled much more quickly than if you did it by hand. And as I said before, the nice thing about all of these data samples is that you can go in and look at the metadata attached to these samples as well. So if I uh, look in data acquisition for this particular sample, oh, it's a test sample, uh, it should show me the metadata here which says that the reason for this is approximately 40% of the images obscured by clouds. So if you found one that was completely out of whack and, and didn't give you the result that you expected, uh, that would be a good way to troubleshoot your model. Anyway, that's a little overview of how you can use GPT-40, the labeling block in Edge Impulse, to um, use an LLM to then label all of your images in a number of different ways, regression and uh, sort of more than just binary classification. I hope that was interesting. Uh, I've been Jim Bruges for Edge Impulse. I look forward to uh, chatting with you all again soon. Thank you very much.